I'm Nancy Hoffman, the Executive Director of the Chisago County HRA EDA. We are sponsoring this event today to bring students together with businesses so that students might find a career path in manufacturing. Hi, I'm Rich Wessels with the Youth Skills Training Program at the Minnesota Department of Labor and Industry. Happy to be at this event today. We have uh, several of our partnering school districts are attending this event. We do have grant funding available. And the program is really about creating partnerships between schools and employers, high growth, high demand employers like manufacturing. So we want these schools to work with employers to provide students with paid work experiences within these uh, awesome industries that have uh, lots of needs and to develop a, a pipeline of talent for their, their future needs. Good morning everyone. I am Della Ludwig. I am a workforce strategy consultant with the Minnesota Department of Employment and Economic Development. I am here today in Chisago County at a career fair with students and we are here celebrating the Manufacturing Month for a Tour of Manufacturing. We have over 250 students joining us today to celebrate Manufacturing Month. This is my region for Central Minnesota and I'm happy to be here uh, joining in with Nancy Hoffman with Chisago County. And with this, we are hoping to um, do more career exploration with students and having them explore and experience different job opportunities. Manufacturing uh, salaries are average around $70,000 per year and the average pay scale will continue to increase in the next uh, coming years. We also have approximately over 86,000 jobs that will be opening uh, through 2030. So please feel free to reach out to us if you'd like more information about joining us in Manufacturing Month. Uh, so I'm a labor market analyst with the state of Minnesota. I'm an economist basically. I study jobs and kind of uh, where people work, how much they make, where they drive, who they work for, things like that. And I research this in many parts of Minnesota. And the reason I'm here today is I wanna kinda talk to you about some of the things that I see uh, beneficial to you at your age. So uh, one of the cool things I think about your age right now is the fact that like, you guys really haven't made any uh, costly mistakes in terms of like, thinking you wanna do one thing and then changing your mind and doing another thing. Uh, the later in life you go, like after you graduate high school, and if you start learning about careers after high school, it's gonna get more and more costly for you to change your mind based on learning something. And that learning what you learn is things that you might be able to pick up today by asking you know, an employer, uh, ask your family, ask anybody that's doing anything that seems interesting to you, ask them. Because it doesn't really cost you anything to change your mind today. But if all of a sudden you say, you know, I really want to be an engineer, and you enroll, you have to go to college to be an engineer, and two years into college, you realize that, you know what, I really don't like any of my classmates, I don't like engineering, and I want to do something else, then it's going to be costly, right? All the changes you can make early on, like now, the cheaper it is for you. And also, things that you might figure out now by asking real good questions, not just how much do people make, but ask, like, what's the best part of your job? And all these employers here, they have many, many different types of occupations. So even though they might um, be seen as like a manufacturer with a lot of assembly jobs or welding jobs or something like that, there's a multitude of different occupations. They all have to have accountants and human resource managers and purchasers and all sorts of different back-end occupations that you just don't typically see. And the reason that all this is super important to you is because a job is basically how you get where you want to be, right? Like, I'm gonna try to help you, these folks are gonna try to help you, your parents, your teachers, everybody's gonna try to help you form that path and help put you on the right, on the right direction, but none of us are gonna be doing the job but you. You're gonna be the only ones doing it. You're going to be stuck with your success and failures when it comes to this. Uh, so you kinda have to own it. It's really up to you to be your own advocate and to really ask the questions that you need to ask instead of just relying on somebody else. Also something to keep in mind since I do publish a lot of you know, we, we are the ones that produce all the wage records. So if you're uh, interested in a particular occupation and you figure out how much it pays, we're the ones that produce that. And don't just take that information at face value. Ask yourself why. So certain jobs will pay much more than others and ask yourself why. Does anybody know why one occupation would pay more than another? Any idea like why people make different amounts of money? Yes, sir. 
Yeah, absolutely. And there's a whole bunch of different reasons why certain occupations pay more or less than others. It could be because it's a more difficult job. Maybe it's more uh, labor intensive and difficult. Maybe not everybody can do it. Maybe it takes a lot of college. Maybe it takes working nights and weekends. Like anything like that, uh, those type of attributes to a job will force an employer to have to pay more because there's fewer people that can or want to do it. And also keep in mind that the more you make, likely the more responsibilities you'll have. And that might mean uh, taking fewer days off. If you get to be so good at your job or you become highly specialized, you might be irreplaceable, which we think of as a terrific thing, but that also means if you want to take off, nobody can replace you, right? So always keep those things in, your, in the back of your mind when you're looking at wages. Otherwise, everybody would basically just look at the highest paying job and say, that's what I want to do, right? But money isn't everything. I've talked to a couple of you guys that like to snowmobile, right? Who likes a snowmobile in here? Anybody? Yeah, it's kind of... So what happens when you get a sick day like a fresh powder? Do you want to go to work? No, that's the last thing I want to do. I want to go snowmobiling. And I'm allowed to do that because I have enough flexibility in my job most of the time. But other occupations, you don't have that, right? If you wanted to be a dentist or a surgeon or something like that, you can't just call up and say, you know what? We just got fresh pow pow. I ain't showing up today, right? So think of those types of things. Those flexibilities, they can kind of make or break happiness in life, much more than just the pure money. And as you're going through this, you know, as seniors, you've probably already started this process of college enrollment or not. Um, but I, I want to tell you that college is incredibly important for some occupations. It's not important for all occupations. And about two thirds of the jobs in our state don't require anything beyond a high school diploma. All right. So the most majority of our jobs don't actually require college. Those jobs that don't require college, the jobs that you want out of that, the, the good paying jobs, require high levels of skills. And those skills, you might gain some of them in high school if your high school is you know, equipped to give you those. But a lot of it's going to come from on the job training and experience. And you can get really good paying jobs regardless of how much higher education you have, but you really need to put your best foot forward. And that's probably one of the best things about high school is some of those skills that employers will pay you for and pay you more than potentially somebody else, they're skills you can get in high school. You know, things like showing up on time, handing in your paper, going above and beyond, attendance, like all that sort of stuff. Employers here, they actually care about that stuff. And your teachers might not be connecting the dots for you. You might think, well, my teacher just, they're stiff and they really want me to do this and it's because they're power tripping. And it's, and it's not really that. It's because those skills are what allow you to make more money later on. It's a work skill. It's, it's not necessarily strictly related to your education. When you graduate, you're probably going to have a graduation party. It's probably going to be awesome. And a lot of people are going to come up and they're going to ask you, where are you going? Have you ever been to a graduation party before? You ever hear adults say that? Where are you going? Where are you going? I don't really know why people say that. To me, it's ridiculous because it kind of insinuates that you need to leave or go somewhere to do something. And really what people should be asking, what I encourage you to ask anybody else when you go to a future graduation party, or even just to think about next year, is what am I going to be? Because that is way, way more important than where you're going. You don't have to leave to be successful. But you have to understand what you want to be, or at least have a good idea so that way when you do start changing your mind, at least you're kind of ping-ponging along the same general path. Because it's going to be much more difficult if you decide one day you want to be a dentist and the next day you want to be a truck driver, right? They have two completely different pathways. Um, and for those of you that are kind of looking at college, you know, this is kind of like a typical decision-making process that parents particularly and their kids then end up making is first we pick a college, right? Yeah, I want to go here because they got a real sweet dorm or the athletics that I want or the campus that I like. Uh, and, then, and then you'll maybe try to figure out what major I want. Do I want an accounting degree? Do I want a business degree? Do I want an engineering degree? And then after you're all said and done with your college experience, then you have to try to figure out what am I going to do with this, right? I've got this degree. Now what am I actually qualified to do? What will employers actually value in the marketplace for the education I've gotten? And this to me is just totally backwards. First, you should be figuring out what pathway you want. What interests you here? You know, if there is something that interests you here or out in the community, anywhere that you see, you should be thinking about that. Because if you figure out kind of what general direction you want to go to, 
then you can decide what type of education you need. And you might not need any higher education. It might be more beneficial, and these folks will tell you, for you to actually start out doing a certain type of job and that occupation kind of lead to the next one and the next one and the next one. All right? But it doesn't really make any sense to get your education and then try to figure it out later. Because trust me, has anybody ever told you that college is expensive? Yes? It's way too expensive, and it's not designed to be a career exploration activity. It's a real good place to throw your money away if that's what you intend to use college for. College is really, really good at getting you educated in what you choose. Not necessarily designed to help you choose what you think you should be doing. That's what stuff like this is for. And college is an investment, and it carries risks like all investments, right? And not all college graduates end up in great jobs, and not all great jobs require a college degree. That's really, really important. You know, if you've heard different, I'd be happy to argue that till I die. Um, and honestly, like right now is a really, really prime time in your life to just give it your all. And I don't work in education. I was a very average student but I can see the failures of my own uh, high school experience. And I'll just share with you a brief story of how I failed to connect the dots and maybe it'll trigger something in you. So I took a keyboarding class, because I'm pretty old now, right? And keyboarding was an option and I didn't know how to type. I'm a simple farm boy and none of my family required a computer to be successful at farming, right? And so I took this keyboarding class mainly because I thought it was a slough class and I spent every hour for one or two semesters, I can't remember, it's a bit of a blur, um, but basically sacrificing my entire Oregon Trail family and just feeding them to the wolves in order to make it as far west as possible and the chance and the hope that within that hour time period I could hunt bear in Oregon Trail. It's like an old school computer game, right? And that's all I did. I never learned how to type at all. A few years later, I'm starting to have to write reports and stuff like that. And because I'm so awful at typing, I'm, I'm an all right writer, uh, I would have to pay my sisters and I would stand behind them and read aloud my, my report and I'd pay them you know, to write. Eventually they priced me out and I couldn't afford them. And then fast forward, I end up going to college and now I publish articles, I research, I write all the time. Uh, so it's a skill that I had to learn later on. And the reason I'm telling you this is because not necessarily the fault of my teacher, I did not connect the dots of typing, that skill set, and an employer value added skill. I had no idea, and it never crossed my mind, that learning how to type would make me more valuable. And the more valuable I am, the more money I can make. Does that kind of make sense? Think about everything in high school that you're doing and learning. A lot of that stuff is going to be able to get you paid more. And explore as many careers as possible. So this is Manufacturing Month. We're here with a bunch of manufacturers. They have many more occupations than just strictly like production occupations. Ask them, be curious. Um, and yeah. Do everything you can and then figure out what type of education you need because uh, it all comes down to getting a job, right? This is really what we want you to avoid is just graduating high school and having no idea what you want to do. Make meaningful connections here because these folks can help guide you and tell you kind of the paths that maybe they took or uh, a path that they think would be helpful to help you get to where you want to be. If you're interested in learning what occupations are in demand in this area, you can just Google Deed Career Pathways and it'll get you to like a, a little dashboard tool. Um, but data is good because I'm an analyst. I love data. Uh, I wish you all the best of luck. And like I said, make sure you engage with all these employers and ask tons of questions. It'll help you in the long term. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Good luck. I'm Stacy with Pine Technical and Community College located in Pine City, Minnesota. We have quite a variety of programs when it comes to manufacturing. We have our applied engineering and technology, we have applied systems, um, automated systems, precision machining, welding, we also offer construction and auto and we are the only school in the state of Minnesota to have gunsmithing. So we're out here today speaking with our students um, of local high schools about these opportunities and how they can come to school with us and move on to work for manufacturers in the area. This is Darren. Darren is one of our lab assistants at the college. And Darren, can you explain a little bit about what you do? 
Uh, what I do at the college is I make sure that the student experience when it comes to labs are where they should be. Um, I'm going to make sure that you're safe uh, as you're going through all your instruction, and I'm going to make sure that you succeed as much as humanly possible before you go out into industry. If you're interested in learning more about Pine Tech and what we have to offer or coming and touring some of the labs that Darren works in, we would love to have you check out our website at pine.edu and request some more information or sign up for one of our Explore Pine visits. We offer open houses um, once a month, generally on a Wednesday at 6 o'clock p.m. So come tour our beautiful campus and see all that we have to offer. Hi, I'm uh, John Meese and I'm with Inside Sales and this is Brenda Duong with our HR department. Uh, we are here today with Step Manufacturing. Uh, so we build asphalt repair equipment and uh, we build that equipment from the ground up. So we're taking in raw materials to build that equipment and um, we, we take it in, we uh, cut it to size, uh, bend it to the prints that are released from our engineering department. We take those bent parts then and uh, bring them over to our fab section, which welds them together using jigs. We have everything from our own engineering team. Um, we do all our own purchasing. John's here with Inside Sales, so we have our own sales reps that go out and sell the equipment, and then it gets pushed through to the shop. Hi, my name's Rob. This is Garrison. We work at Metal Crafters of Stacy, uh, just south of Stacy there. Precision milling and turning. We make all sorts of different stuff, um, mainly components for machinery, uh, any customer really that'll come in. We specialize in short runs, but we do long runs as well. The main employees that we hire are programmers, people that can grab a machine, grab a part, grab a print, and turn it into something useful that we can sell. So to show you some of our products, these are pulleys for belts. They're made out of Delrin. That is a, uh, a block of some function. Then we've got another flange. This involves both milling and machining. It's also engraved on the edge. And that is just a mill part. And we got some plate work as well. I'm Luke with Plastic Products Company. We're a plastic injection molding company. We also have Smith Metals, which is a metal injection molding company. We make a lot of plastic parts like uh, these uh, Starbucks cups and uh, a lot of appliances that you see kind of every day through injection, an injection molding process, uh, a lot of appliances, and uh, a little bit of automotive. We have everything from you know people manufacturing on the floor, tool rooms, mold techs, IT sales, a large variety of uh, different people that we hire and need for our employment. Yeah, we're an employee-owned company, which means that as you work for our company, you get stocks in the company, and that's just on top of your paycheck, and it's a great way to you know, invest in your future without having to put any extra money away out of your paycheck. And it's a pretty unique thing and it's a really good opportunity for anyone who comes to work with us. We've been around for about 60 years now um, it's, and we've been growing pretty rapidly. We currently have 11 different facilities and we are you know, still growing and doing very well as a company. So we're, we should be pretty reliable the, uh, to, to stay around for a while. Uh, so yeah, if you, you're interested in a job, just come by and we're always looking for employees. I'm Jessica from um, our HR department at Plastec Corporation. We are a custom manufacturing um, plastic injection molding company. Um, so we make a lot of um, parts from start to finish um, for specific customers. Um, so the plastic will actually be injected into uh, molds that we have inside the machines and the product will form and harden and come out into um, products that you see in your everyday. Um, so we have some production um, positions. We have material handling, warehouse, uh, mold setup techs that are going to be working with the molds inside of our machines. Our process techs work with um, the computer systems of the machines, troubleshoot anything that goes down, um, any sort of office position, so accounting, human resources, um, from, the, from the ground up of, of different positions. If you are interested in learning more about Plastech Corporation or the jobs that we have available, go to plastechcorporation.com. P-L-A-S-T-E-C-H corporation.com. 
Hi, I'm Brian with Kendall Howard. We're out of Chisago. We're a sheet metal fabricator. Uh, we take a blank sheet of sheet metal and turn it into cabinets, uh, other wall mount cabinets. We make full-size server cabinets, uh, workbenches, desks for training. We're hiring in positions anywhere from assembly to welding to uh, product design, quality control. Uh, we have an HR department where these ladies are from, engineering, sales. Um, so there's a lot that goes into taking a blank piece of metal and turning it into this or this. Kendall Howard's a great place to work because we have competitive wages, great benefits. Uh, they feed us often. We just had a Dickie's buffet yesterday. Uh, we have frequent potlucks, short commute to work if you're from the area. Kendall Howard will knock your socks off. Hello, I'm Kayleen Jacobs with Sunrise Fiberglass. Uh, we make fiberglass composites and we are located in Wyoming, Minnesota. We are hiring for all open positions. Um, if you're interested, let us know. Hi, good morning everybody. My name is Elijah. I work with Schwing America. Schwing is based out of White Bear Township and we make cement pumping equipment. Uh, very large trucks and uh, tow behind cement pumps. Uh, we're currently looking for uh, many types of manufacturing positions, including welders, painters, uh, fabricators, assembly people, and uh, mechanics. So if you have any interest in any of those types of positions or other positions, including call center positions, warehouse, um, and uh, even finance, uh, we're looking for those folks as well. So thanks for your interest in Schwing America. Hi, uh, my name is Stacy Phil. I'm president of General Pattern. Um, we are a plastics manufacturing company that's located in Blaine and Wyoming. Uh, we uh, do everything from 3D printing to high volume injection molding and everything in between. We're a single source solution to our customers, so we have everything for molding from 3D printing, polyurethane molding, roto molding, injection molding, high, low, and medium volumes, thermal forming. We have some welding, um, just a lot of different processes, our own paint department, assembly operation, and trimming as well. So we have entry-level jobs, all the way up to skilled jobs. Uh, most all of our jobs have on-the-job training. Um, and we have a lot of different openings right now for uh, different types of jobs that could be entry-level. Uh, we have press operating, a uh, set of technicians, processing technicians available. Uh, those might need some on-the-job training, but that, we, we're definitely interested in training people. Um, we also have uh, tooling, tool making, uh, quality technician roles available, and 3D printing specialists as well. So if you're interested in applying at General Pattern Company, uh, just, I don't know, we've got, our, we've got a website. Go ahead and reach out to us. Thank you. And this is Katie. Um, she's also at General Pattern Company in the sales department. And I don't know, did I get, did I get, did I get everything? Is there anything you want to add? Oh, this is our 100th year anniversary. And, mm -hmm. uh, it's wonderful here. We have a great Christmas party. And you got yes, we have a great Christmas party. Uh, we have four core values, and one of them is fun, and we try to make uh, work fun every day. Hi, I'm Allison Endick with Rosenbauer America, the world's largest fire truck manufacturer. If you haven't really experienced what Rosenbauer is or what we do, we build from start to finish the full fire truck itself. Everything from an aerial, so a fire truck that has a ladder on it, a tanker, a rescue, a pumper, as well as for our fire departments at airports, an ARF machine. We also have the very first electric fire truck that's out in the market in LA. So, how do you build a fire truck? Well, you start from the very beginning. We build the chassis, we build the cab, we even um, bring in the aerial of a facility that we have in Nebraska. And it takes about uh, two months, depending on the product, to develop it. And it also can take up to uh, three months if it is a larger one. Rosenbauer has been in the Wyoming area for over 35 years, and we continue to have a strong presence here. It's because of the community people in the area who live here that are also our employees and my teammates. So please stop by Rosenbauer and learn more about us. You can see us at RosenbauerAmerica.com. I've been with Rosenbauer for over a year and a half and I've really enjoyed my experience. I encourage you to come out and see what a great place it is to work at Rosenbauer. Hey, it's Brian Nielsen, BNN Sheet Metal, Wyoming, Minnesota. We're a manufacturer of 46 years of sheet metal products. Man manufacture anything one to 10,000. 
anything out of sheet metal. We supply all other manufacturers with their basic sheet metal needs. I hope you come work for us. Hope to see you soon. Come see us in Wyoming. Right. Hello, I'm Rebecca with Central Minnesota Jobs and Training Services, and I'm here today with my co-worker Leslie. And at Central Minnesota Jobs and Training Services, we want you to think about all the different opportunities that there might be in manufacturing. Consider how many different options there might be. You might think of welding or machining, but there's also a lot of different types of careers, such as accounting or um, logistics, that you can consider as well. So we'd encourage you to not just pick something that someone else tells you to do, but take a little time to look at what your skills and interests are and how they might match up with careers. A lot of people can help you with that. It might be your parents, your teachers, or our organization as well. We can help you one-on-one -on -one and we'd be happy to do that. We have locations all across an 11 county area. Here is our map and there's different dots. So if you go to cmjts.org, you can find our offices and hours on our website.